With the popularity of Sony's current range of interchangeable lens video cameras, we get so many questions about these cameras with lots of them being related to color. Thankfully, Sony has made this incredibly easy across their current lineup, as you have pretty much the same color profiles in the a7S III as you do all the way up to the Sony Venice. One color profile that is incredibly popular right now is a Cinetone, so we thought we'd create a video looking at it and why you may want to use it for your next production. Estinatome was first released back in 2019 with the FX9, and it is a new video look that uses a new gamma curve and color matrix that Sony has developed to provide images with a more cinematic tone and color than their previous video profiles. It has been inspired by the color science found in Sony's flagship cinema production camera, the Venice, but has been designed for fast acquisition and delivery modern video productions. So if you're wanting a nice Rec. 709-ish video look straight out of these cameras, this is a much nicer option than the legacy Rec. 709 profiles that these cameras also do feature. If we look at the graphs that Sony have provided in their white paper for s we can see that s uses a linear gamma curve, so it has lots of contrast in its shadows, but it also rolls off in the highlights from around 70%. When we compare s to s we can see that s has a much longer roll off in the highlights. But this is to be expected as S709 has been designed as a low contrast monitoring LUT for cinema productions. If you're coming from a more broadcast orientated background used to shooting Sony's legacy Rec. 709 profile, s will be a breath of fresh air when it comes to color reproduction as well as increased highlight roll off. Though if you're coming from shooting an S-Log3 or another log profile, you will need to be aware of how s is rolling off the highlights. However, as long as you expose properly, s can be a really nice option if you want a better looking 709 image straight out of your camera for projects where you may not have time to color your footage in post or if you're doing some kind of live production. Sony has done a great job of making their cinema line incredibly uniform when it comes to their image profiles. Currently, you can shoot s across the Alpha One, A7S III, FX3, FX6, and FX9, and S-Log3, S-Gamma3 Cine across all of them and the Venice. This means that matching the cameras between each other should actually be relatively easy, so that's what we did. We grabbed an FX3, FX6, FX9, and Venice, and shot some controlled images to see how each camera looks in the different profiles, as well as how well they match each other, which we'll have a look at in a bit. I've seen lots of people asking how to properly expose a Cinetone, and really this is pretty subjective, so it's 100% worth you testing to see where you like the look of your image. Though there are some general practices worth knowing to start with. When it comes to exposing skin, I suggest using the zebras on the FX3 or an A7S III and waveforms on everything else. You can then use some common IRE values that are quoted for skin to expose your image. Mostly these numbers are referring to the brightest part of the skin in a brightly lit scene. Just bear in mind that these values are there just as a rough guide. When exposing for Rec. 709, Caucasian skin tone should sit somewhere between 50-75% to and darker skin tone should sit between 25 and 40%. Like I said, this is really only a guide. When it comes to how a Cinetone handles colour, Sony have prioritised skin tone over everything else. And with how a Cinetone has been designed, how you expose the skin will change the level of saturation present on your subject. As you underexpose, the saturation of the skin tone will increase. Where you want your skin to sit will depend on how you want your subject's skin to look. Personally, I think s looks best a touch underexposed because of the increased highlight detail and skin tone. When it comes to S-Log3, Sony recommends exposing it at the following percentages. 80% or mid-gray at 41%, Caucasian skin tones roughly between 48 to 52%, and 90% white around 61%. With how much dynamic range S-Log3 can capture, most people prefer to overexpose S-Log slightly and then bring your levels back down in post. But with these newer Sony cameras, this isn't 100% needed, but can still get you better results and image quality if done correctly. Before we move on, I wanted to quickly explain the difference between S Gamma 3 and S Gamma 3 Cine, as all of these cameras can shoot in either color gamut. S Gamma 3 has a wider color space than S Gamma 3 Cine, which makes it great for capturing as much color information as possible, but it also makes it harder to color grade in post whereas s 3cine has a slightly reduced color space, which is still pretty wide as it's larger than DCI-P3, but is easier to handle in post-production. So for most, s 3cine is the better option. With all of these cameras featuring dual-base ISOs, I wanted to quickly go over what they are with each gamma curve. 
shooting in different gammas will change your base ISO, and each camera's two natives are slightly different as well. In s Cinetone, the FX3 and A7S3's fakish dual base native ISOs are 100 and 2000. The FX6s are 320 and 5000, and the FX9s are 320 and 1600. In S Log 3, the FX3 and A7S3s are 640 and 12,800. The FX6s are 800 and 12,800. The FX9s are 804,000, and the Venices are 500 and 2500. And this is worth bearing in mind if you are shooting with a combination of these cameras together in the same scenario. However, with the fantastic internal NDs of the FX6, FX9, and Venice, it is incredibly easy to correct for these differences in exposure. The only camera that you may have trouble shooting paired with another is the FX3 because of the lack of an internal ND. However, given that the FX3 has the lowest base ISO in each gamma, this does mean that you should only have to bring the exposure down on the other cameras that you're using, which due to their ND will make it easy. Anyway, let's take a look at how well these cameras can match as well as some other test shots. As you mentioned earlier, we grabbed an FX3, FX6, FX9 and Venice and got shooting. We shot with the Venice in S-Log3 S-Gamma3.Cine and graded it to a nice neutral point so we can reference it as our standard image. We then wanted to take a look at how these different cameras look in S-Log3 S-Gamma3.Cine and S-Cinetone. We used the same Zeiss 85mm f1.4 and Metabone's Cine E to EF adapter across all of our cameras and then our Ninja 5's waveform to expose. We shot tests both inside and outside and with our inside tests, our white balance was set to 5500 Kelvin, which we shot in both profiles and both of the native ISOs on each camera, adjusting exposure a few different ways. We lit using a Gemini 1x1 soft with a gridded softbox as our key light, with an Aperture 600D Pro and giant Octobox providing us with our fill. We then had the new Gemini 1x1 hard with a snap grid giving us a warm edge light. With the footage then in DaVinci Resolve, we did a couple of passes to achieve a few different things. With S-Log3, we coloured the Venice to look as best but as neutral as it could, then used Sony's S709 LUT corrected and uncorrected on the rest of the clips. We then coloured each camera to look its best, tried to match each camera to its Cinetone counterpart, and then tried to match each camera to a consistent image. With S Cinetone, we first have it untouched straight out of camera, then a pass matching each camera's tone and white balance, and lastly a pass trying to make each image look its best while trying to match each camera. Under these controlled lighting conditions, all cameras are easy to get close to each other, even the Venice when in S-Log3. The FX9 was the hardest though due to its green cast. Correcting this in Resolve makes skin magenta without using qualifiers and secondaries. The Venice skin tones are unsurprisingly the smoothest and cleanest, with the other three cameras compressing red tones a good bit more. But this isn't surprising. s tone looks good straight out of the cameras, however a little bit of work can get it looking almost as good as S-Log3 in this scenario. When outside, the light kept changing quite a bit, so these aren't going to be 100% the same, but they are close enough. We only shot at the camera's lower base ISOs, and while in Essentone, we shot one exposure with my skin at around 70%, and then another eyeballing the exposure off of the monitor for what looked correct. For S-Log3, we exposed using our color chart, placing 18% gray at around 41% on our waveform on the Ninja 5. When looking between these clips, you can really see the dynamic range difference between Essentone and S-Log3. And these shots really do show the difference between the different cameras' image quality. All cameras are white balanced the same, but with the changing light, there may be slight imperfections between them. During the matching process, we used the chart as the reference, but you can see slight differences between the different cameras, mainly on my skin. However, using and grading to this chart can get you close. 
We can really see how different exposure also changes saturation on my skin as we mentioned earlier, with the colours on underexposed skin becoming more saturated but also breaking apart more. Of course, all of these cameras have the ability to shoot in a range of other gammas and colour matrices, but the most popular combination has to be S-Log3 and S-Gamma3.Cine. S-Log3 is Sony's most manageable log curve, which captures much more Xamic range than s -Cinetone. We can see this quite clearly here. For this example, we shot our first image in s -Cinetone, exposed for Sam's skin, and then another using s -Cinetone exposed for the bright window behind him. We then shot the same exposures, but with S-Log3, so you can see the difference between them, which is pretty striking. Sony developed S709 as a monitoring look for when recording RAW or LOG on the Venice to provide a nice cinematic look while monitoring on set. So it wasn't designed to be a LUT to be used as the final look of your image. It's more of a starting point for a grade, which is how we used it here. When compared to s Cinetone straight out of camera, you can see that they yield very different results. Tone, contrast and colour are very different between the two. And personally, we prefer the place we can get skin to when using S-Log3 over s -Cinetone but it takes much more effort to get to that point. We can see that the s cinetone image is much pinker and more contrasty than the S709 image. Color is also a little different between the two of them. s cinetone looks great straight out of camera, whereas S-Log3 needs some tweaking to get it to a nice point, which is what we should expect when shooting with a log profile. Well, personally, I can see three very strong workflow options for people with these cameras. s cinetone is great if you want a really nice looking 709 image straight out of the camera. It does a really good job when it comes to color, you just need to be careful not to overexpose your highlights. But this isn't saying that S-Log3 can't be quick as well. If you are editing your project shot on these cameras and still want a fast turnaround, this is possible with some of the solid LUTs available on the market currently or via Sony's S7-9 LUT, but this will require a few tweaks to get to a nice place. Lastly, S-Log3 is also incredibly great with more traditional colour post-production pipelines and if shot well, can really shine with a solid colourist working their magic. Let us know what you think of s down in the comments below. And to stay up to date with our upcoming content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And thank you so much for watching.